and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna, and today we're going to make Junior Wrap Up. Let's get going. They're lucky in the green today, so it's hot. Y yesterday was like 30 degrees Celsius, so pff, it's fun. It's like actually July 9th right now, and I'm, so I'm not too late on my June Wrap Up. I just finished filming my May Wrap Up, so that was definitely way too late. I got my like, crazy bun going on because it's hot. But, yeah, so, otherwise, let's get going with our June wrap-up. One of them is The Wrong Family by Tam and Fisher. Have you ever been wrong about someone? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Juno was wrong about Minnie Crouch. Before moving in with the Crouch family, Juno thought Minnie and her husband, Nigel, had the perfect marriage, the perfect son, the perfect life. Only now that she's living in a beautiful house, she sees the cracks in a crumbling facade that are too deep to ignore. I gave this a three stars. I didn't really like the ending. Uh, I didn't really like the ending of the book since it felt really underwhelming. There was so much build up, but then it just felt flat. And the book was also repetitive, like spoilers, so, like such as Amanda having an affair with every guy in the neighborhood, and then you know repeat like that was just way too crazy and way too much. I'm like, how many affairs is she gonna have? Like. Oh boy. <laughs> and so, and then the guy was like, I was sleeping with her, but I didn't kill her. Like, that would be constantly on repeat. I mean, just give us something new at this point. Like, I was just so done. Um, it was frustrating and didn't really got to the point yet. Uh, it was a fast read, but for being a fast read, it wasn't the forever. And the characters were boring, and there was honestly too many characters as well, so. I don't know, I just didn't really, really like this book that much. It just felt really boring, in all honesty, so... Yeah, I don't have really much to say about this book, just because... Like, it also did felt so boring, so... Yeah. So this book is actually supposed to be Someone We Know by Shadi Lapena. Maybe you don't know your neighbors as well as, as well you thought you did. Now I'm questioning my neighbors. <laughs> In a quiet leafy suburb in upstate New York, a teenager has been sneaking into houses and into the owner's computers as well as learning the secrets and maybe sharing some of them too. Who is he and what might have he uncovered? After two anonymous letters are received, whispers start to circulate and suspicion mounts. And when a woman down the street in some murders, the tension reaches the breaking point. Who killed her? Who, who knows more than they're telling? And how far will these many nice people to go protect their own secrets? Well, and they're not really nice people if they have to do whatever it takes to protect themselves, are they? <laughs> I gave it a 3 stars. I think the pacing of the book was really slow, and it took a while to be invested, and I didn't really like any of the characters. The ending was too much. Uh, it was also random and anticlimactic that it kind of ruined the experience of the book. The book itself was quite bizarre and not really believable, and a lot of like the book elements being confusing, like spoilers, and like such as many wanting to be pregnant, but wasn't discussed about about them trying. Um, Nigel's affair wasn't really needed. Dakota was she was like quite an odd one. Um, and the book honestly tried to go in too many different directions, which I thought it kind of made the book go flat. Because of it, it was just trying to do too much at once, and it just didn't really work quite well. So it could have been better, it could have been believable, but it, it really wasn't. And my next book is Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. Welcome to the City of Sin, where casino family is reigned, gangs infest the streets, and secrets hide in any shadow. I gave this like a 3.5 to 4 stars. It was a weird and confusing book for sure, but that was like much like the world building and uh, there's a lot of info dumping about my misers and monarchists, talents of aptitude, talents of mysteries, so on and so forth and a lot of information but not a lot of depth to it so we didn't really know much about them. Uh, it was it was like just a mismatch of boring politics and more like the characters never stood up to me and the third person would somewhat lack last plot, mainly to be difficult to connect. The writing wasn't anything special, there were a lot of moving parts to the plot, almost too many. Quite a few of them felt, 
felt new, um, and such as like vault felt new and unique, such as vault orbs for currency. I thought that was really cool, and I, I haven't really like read anything like that, so that was really cool. The plot twist kept getting wild and wild, but that was so crazy and insane. I don't know how to feel about them. Um, and the details of the story were just, you know, just simply kept being building and building. Uh, but there was never any reason to care, in all honesty. And I kind of stopped, I kind of started remembering the details just because it really did got too much and it could have been fleshed out a little bit better. But I think this book was honestly trying to be like Six of Crows, something like that. So, I know that Six of Crows, but it did kind of have that same vibe. Like, you can easily tell just by looking at the book cover, like, oh, okay. But it didn't really have that same vibe to Six of Crows, so. Yeah. But this one was quite an interesting read. It's actually a fairy tale retail kind of thing. Uh, well, it's not really a fairy tale, but it's like about the Mozart siblings, which I actually don't know much about them. So this book was actually really fun to read. It's The Kingdom of Back by Mary Lou. It's actually called The Kingdom of Back in the Mozart's tale, if you will. So. That was really cool. Born with the gift for music, Natalie Mozart has just one wish, to be remembered forever. But even as she delights audiences with a masterful playing, she has little hope she will ever become the acclaimed composer she longs to be. She's a young woman in 18th century Europe, and that means composing is forbidden to her. She will perform only until she reaches a marriageable age, her tyrannical father has made that much clear. As Natalie's hopes grows dimmer with each passing year, the talents of her beloved younger brother Wolfgang only seem to shine brighter. His brilliance begins to eclipse her own until one day a mysterious stranger from a magical land appears with an irresistible offer. He has the power to make a wish come true, but his help may cost her everything. So I gave it a 3.5. I, I think this is on me just because I really don't know too much about the Mozart's the siblings, but. I just kind of went in blindly, so it was, I was still intrigued to learn more about the siblings and their unique bond. I think the sisters, I think the sister of like of how Melanie and Lou was nicely done, and even though I, I, you know, as I said, I don't really know much about them. The fantasy parts was a bit difficult, but and was a bit difficult, and some pieces didn't really fit in. And I like the world building and how Manny added so much depth to the sisters, despite being turned despite being turned into a magical tale. The ending was interesting and the story was a bit slow, but it did turn out to be realistic and comprehensible, which I think is really nice. And I also feel like writing endings realistically is something most authors would will struggle with. Sometimes I do also have a struggle of writing realistic endings as well, but I think it's a nice talent to have just because it kind of just fits all the anyways and just makes a really nice ending. So yeah, I think I do want to do more research on the Mozarts. It sounds quite fascinating actually, so yeah, it'll be fun to read about them. My next book is Rise of the Vicious Princess by C.J. Medline. So this is like the first in the YA political fantasy duology about a fierce princess determined to bring lasting peace to her kingdom regardless of the cost of her heart. I gave this a 3.5 stars. The story begins like right in the action so that was quite interesting to read. And the book did uh, also ended up in a major cliffhanger. I didn't really like Chavez since it's, since it's like it's so rubbed in as the princess is suspicious and powerful and it's kind of annoying to me. I don't know, I don't really feel like she was vicious in all honesty, but maybe just judge just me. I actually have the book in my makeshift tripod. It's like right there. <laughs> but anyways, um, I wish the author honestly used a different word of fury. Like, the amount of times fury has been within the book is quite astounding. Uh, cinnamons do exist, if you guys didn't know, so maybe go and get a thesaurus. And it was also getting quite repetitive throughout the book, so yeah. One thing I like about Chavez though is that she actually cared about her citizens 
and actually put in the book, unlike most YAs when they don't even do anything and just complain. So kudos for her. Uh, there were also times that the book was slow and it took and uh, it took like the plot to move quite a long time. So honestly, it was still a fun read. It really was, but I just wish it really felt so slow at times. It kind of throws off the pacing and all that. So yeah, it was still an okay book. My next book is Song of Six Bells by Judy Ireland. Zu, a talented young musician, has no past and probably no future. Often at a young age, her kindly poet uncle took her in and arranged for an apprenticeship in one of the most esteemed entertainment houses in the kingdom. She doesn't remember much from before entering the house of flowing water, and when her uncle is suddenly killed in a abandoned attack, she is devastated to lose her last connection to her life outside of her indentual contract. I gave this a 4 stars. I liked the world building, but I think it was also focused on it too much. It was a great strength, but it really did focus too much, and you know, just highlighting details about the celestial beings, giving them unique stories, but it ended up honestly being irrelevant to the story, which kind of made me disappointed, actually. Like, I really like listening to the stories, but I honestly wish it had something to do more with the plot, but it never was. I did feel detached from the characters. I think Zhu, Kiri's and Courageous are good. I think they're good traits to have. The writing is like flowery, which is something I don't really like. Um, the plot was okay, but because of the overshadow <laughs> world building that it is, the plot didn't mean it until like 30% of the book, and the ending, I thought it was nice. I did like the plot twist that happened in the book, and I like the mysteries of the estate. She later goes on to an estate. Not a spoiler, it's, it's actually in the book, but... Yeah, so I thought it was like a really nice um, plot twist, which I really liked, so yeah. My final book is Seven Feasts of Saints and by M.K. Lobb. In the city of Abrazi, a saints and a disciplines rule with terrifying and unjust power, playing favorites while the unfavored struggle to survive. I give it a four stars. The book was intriguing and the world building as well. I really did like the world building. It was so cool. Um, I wish there was more about the saints just because they were also really fascinating and I want to learn more about them. Um, the mystery was great and I liked the standing of the book and nothing was really complicated. I also thought this was like an easy read as well and so nothing was overly the top and all that. Um, and I like how the world building was explained. I thought the world building was explained really nicely. I didn't think there was too much info dumping so there's that. Uh, maybe towards the ending of the who done it mystery thing, because there was mystery elements to it, so I think the end, the uh, info dumping at the end kind of meh, it couldn't be done better, but um, and the magic was also intriguing, and I wanted more of the story to show more about the disciplines with different powers. The characters were decent, even though I didn't quite like Roz, I also thought she was a jerk. To Damien, she, like she had no right to be that much of. Can I swear? <laughs> she hasn't. She hasn't that much. You know, she can't be that. Like she doesn't have a right to be that much of a jerk. <laughs> uh, I wanted to swear. swear. Uh, to Damien, like, like, dude, just chill, okay? Just chill. I don't know. I just didn't really like her, so yeah, poor Damien, honestly. <laughs> So those were all the books in June, so I had quite a good reading time in June, actually. Most of them were audiobooks, but I also had physical books as well. But honestly, I still thought it was a good reading month, so there's that. So yeah, let me know what you have read in June, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!